Well, let's look further into this uh, and talk about the Tamils, what they want. Uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Sahia Morty is uh, joining us uh, on the line or joining us live now. Uh, uh, I want to ask you first about, uh, just, just to give people a, a sense of what the Tamils are and what they want. Right. I think prior to British rule in, in Sri Lanka, the island called Sri Lanka, there were two nations. One was the Tamil homeland and the other one the Sinhalese homeland. But the British made it as one country for their administrative benefit. Then they left it in 1948, uh, given independence to Sri Lanka, and left the rule to the majority okay. Sinhalese uh, in the hand. Well, that gives that gives so some background. That gives some background for people to get a sense of why why this is going on. But, but tell me about where you are in London. The response of the diaspora to the tactics being used by the Tamil Tigers uh, using air power and more suicide bombings is is are they tactics that are supported there? I think, yes, I think more than 99% uh, of the diaspora community, Tamil community, were pleased about the attack, actually. Um, it doesn't mean that uh, uh, the violence, is, they are supporting the violence, because all this time, uh, the air power used by the government only against the civilians. If you, if you see the history, most of the civilian targets being bombed by the Air Force of Sri Lanka, and last year, August, there was a school bomb, more than 60 girls, the children, died there. So at that time, no one noticed about it. Even the UNICEF and some other NGOs uh, went and uh, they, they confirmed it. But the international media and the uh, government, they didn't bother much. But now, this is the first time the Tamil Tigers use their air power. That makes the Tamil diaspora happy because I could see I some people give them sweets and cakes, you know. Okay, well, uh, you, you're the director of a, uh, a charity organization uh, there in London and a leader of the Tamil expatriate community. D uh, I have to ask you this, where's the money coming from when it comes to the dias? How is that money being collected? Your own organization was at one point accused of collecting money under the cover of being an NGO and passing it on for the purchase of arms. Uh, how is the money collected and sent? I think that was a TRO you are mentioning about that. But now we are, this is White Pigeon, is the main uh, charity in the UK. We are doing charitable work in Sri Lanka for the landmine victims. It is all peer donations from the public, mostly Tamil public. They want to help their brothers and sisters. Uh, and we channel through uh, 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 legal, uh, legally by through the bank transaction. So it goes to the projects, mainly for the landmine project, victim support, and vocational training, that sort of project. But do, but do, you, believe Lond uh, do you believe Tamils in London are providing financial support for the LTTE and uh, its ongoing fighting? I think without uh, finance, the LTTE or any fighting machine cannot continue. So it shows, I think, I think more than 99% of the Tamil diaspora, they are backing the uh, because freedom fight actually because either one of either one person from their family must have killed because of his violence because of his war mm. so they are sympathy and the LTTE is controlling a vast amount of uh, land in Sri Lanka the uh, in the northern east of Sri Lanka and they are doing the administrative work police station courts uh, medical school law school so it is a de facto government you can call yeah. So I want people are supporting. Don't have a lot more time. I just want to ask you this, though. Uh, this has been going on for years and years and years. Uh, deals have been brokered and then violated. Uh, the fighting continues. It's, a, it's one of the world's longest-running disputes. Tamils do make up, I think, 4 to 5 percent of the population in the area that they, they, they want. Uh, yet they're demanding about 30 percent of Sri Lanka. Uh, that's not likely to be agreed to. Where, where's the compromise going to come in here? I think uh, it's through talk, negotiation talks only. That is, the, that's how I feel, you know. Uh, that the violence won't bring any peace in anywhere. So peace is important. But the party should be open-heartedly sit and talk. That is the important thing. But the, Tamil, the Tamils aren't willing to give up their demand for such a large amount of the country for such a small percentage of the population. No, it is not the proportion. It is the land. They were ruled by centuries and thousands and thousands of years because northern east is the Tamil homeland and south is single majority Sri Lanka. So it is not the amount of the land, it is their homeland. 
because they have got their own territory, language, religion, culture. So that's how that's what we have to see. At Tamils are about more than 22 percent of that island. Yeah, I'm talking about in the area that they're demanding. It's, it's a much smaller percent. But I want to thank you for your time and coming on and explaining some of this uh, to us, uh, Satya Murthy, uh, Doctor. Thanks so much for your time. Thank you very much for inviting me, sir. Thank you. Well, the U.S. President George W. Bush is criticized.